Inside this box is the main gear element. It's a laptop that is thin. It's light and, oh my God. Look at this thing. It's powerful and also really easy to unbox. Wow, they really simplify things for you, don't they? Talk about your no frills. Thanks to Main Gear for sponsoring this video. Let's take a look at it, shall we? Starting on the outside, the Element has a surprisingly understated look given the performance that it's got on the inside. So you've just got a silkscreened main gear logo here, little bit of IO at the back, got your HDMI, got your gigabit ethernet, got your Thunderbolt, a handful of USB 3 type A's and an SD card reader, and then a whack of ventilation on the bottom along with all of those stickers that used to be on the palm rests, but now thankfully they're hiding away where we don't have to see them. The hinge is a one finger lift design, which is really nice. It stays exactly where you say, and there's a little bit of flex on the display up here, but given how thin it is, I don't know what else they would have done because overall, for an RTX 2070 Max Q based machine, this thing is pretty darn svelte and actually surprisingly light. We asked them what the material it was made out of was because we couldn't really put our finger on it and it turns out it's not actually plastic, it's a magnesium alloy that's part of what keeps the weight of the machine down. On the inside, still understated, but if you're into that RGB, you have the option of lighting up the keyboard even though the rest of the machine just looks like perfectly at home in a boardroom. Oh, actually there's the light bar here as well, but like the keyboard, you can turn that off. With it fired up, some of the other features are immediately obvious. So the bezels are nice and slim and this is cool. They've managed to keep the top bezel from getting super thick while still including a top mounted webcam and Windows Hello facial recognition with the IR camera. That is a really, really nice inclusion and something that honestly I think should be on basically every laptop over a thousand dollars. It's so cool just opening it up, hey it's you, and off you go. The display is 15.6 inch and runs at 144 hertz which as we showed in our recent video has a competitive advantage over 60 hertz. It's actually surprising how much of a difference it makes and actually the viewing angles well, you guys can see them for yourselves. Man, I am so glad that we are done with trash tier TN displays on these gaming monitors. Now we get to have the best of both worlds. As for the RGB backlighting on the keyboard, it's all controlled using this app. What's it called? Node Control Center. So you can set up a bunch of different colors if you want. You can set up effects. And you can control the brightness if you're just on one of the more uh, simple profiles, just using the hotkeys. So there's five brightness settings, including off. So I guess that's four brightness settings and one darkness setting. Surprisingly, the Node Control Center is the only quote unquote bloatware that was pre-installed on this thing. Um, other than the keyboard, it controls the RGB settings for the light bar, um, some overclocking profiles, uh, quick settings for things like the display color profile mode, and it's got a little system monitor in it. It did not suck up a ton of resources, which was really nice to see. And even then, if you don't feel like opening it for the performance profiles, they've actually got a dedicated button right here next to the power button that will cycle those for you. Aside from the RGB lighting, the keyboard has some other interesting features too. Uh, it's actually got optical key switches, which if you want to learn more about, we've got a tech wiki here, but basically it's a different way of actuating the keys and you can actually probably hear them. They've got a nice long stroke and a pretty clicky feel. I do think that the keycap stabilization could be better, but there is minimal to no deck flex on this thing, which is absolutely not a given. As for the trackpad, thankfully, it's a Windows Precision model and it tracks as you would expect for one of those, which is to say it feels nice. And so even if it's not a MacBook, this is about as good as it gets on Windows and as a bonus, it's glass topped. Well, that's not bad. We're getting well in excess of 100 FPS, running at 1080p, all high presets on Tomb Raider. You turned motion blur off, right, Nicholas? Right. Good, good. Now you can hear the fans kicking in a little bit. Of course, we are running in red line mode. But like, come on, you were gonna put headphones on anyway, right? Yeah, I can still hear the fans over the speakers. 
So yeah, headphones. No problem. Good stereo separation though. It always surprises me how different the implementations tend to be. Sometimes you get speakers that are right up here forward firing and the stereo separation sucks. And other times you get side firing and downward firing ones that actually really sound like there's bird noises coming at you from over here. Yeah, that's not bad actually. Where is he though? Oh, there he is. That's actually pretty impressive. Did you try that? There's that Sound Blaster logo on the bottom. So they're using Sound Blaster Cinema 5, which I hadn't really given any thought to, because I've never tried it before, but it's pretty cool, actually. Now, after running for a while, it looks like we are up against some thermal constraints. So we're down to closer to 90 to 100 FPS, but that is still extremely respectable in this game. We're also getting a little bit toasty, although it's mostly concentrated up near the top of the keyboard and doesn't make its way down past the, maybe the top of the W key. Toasty, like this wonderful LTT sweater, lttstore.com. All right, I got this, I got this, ladies and gentlemen. Oi, oi, I hit a guy. Wait, what happened? I swear I hit him. Ah, yes, okay, well, that's what happened there. Oh, enemy UAVs, those sound bad. Oh, and we're dead. Oh, wow, look at that, we both, wow, our bodies hit the ground at the same time. Once again, the lesson is, Oh, there's landmines. Cool. Well, I'm just gonna go under here. What do I care? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, take that, loser. Well, all right. Well, I got two kills. Um, so yeah, it's not gonna turn you into an epic gamer overnight, but it felt real smooth, actually. Felt really good. And this is on all high details, right? I don't think I mentioned this already, but it's got a Core i7-9750H, so that's a six core, 12 thread processor. And I fired up the Blender benchmark to see how its turbo responds. Now it boosts up to four, four plus gigahertz when you're just hitting it with something really, really short. But you can see it's falling down a little bit. So we're at about 3.8 gigahertz right now. And I'm expecting after a minute or two, it's gonna come even lower than that. That's expected on mobile chips. And actually, so far, it's doing very respectably. And there it is. Our steady state is around 3.4 high gigahertz, which, I mean, compared to like a super thick gaming laptop, maybe not that impressive, but for something this thin, pretty darn respectable. Making this unit even more interesting is the fact that NVIDIA's studio drivers now exist for the RTX 2070 Max-Q that's inside, making it actually feasible as a mobile workstation, especially because thanks to Thunderbolt 3, which I know a lot of people don't feel as strongly about as I do, means that you can actually expand it with external cards, like if you needed 10 gigabit networking, for example. Um, now it's time to open it up. Check this out, my new office. Schwamp, just like that. Ah, oh, good, the patient is asleep. Wow, they're like not even trying to get keep me out of this thing, hey? 10 screws. And, oh, where is it? Hey, there we go. Pippity pop, off the bottom comes. Now, it's still a laptop, so you're not gonna be doing a ton of upgrading, but you've got access to your DIMM slots, both of which are populated. That takes care of the 32 gigs of RAM that's pre-installed running in dual channel. And, this is nice, you've got an empty M.2 if you wanted to add more storage down the line. So the one they're using in here is, uh, an Intel 660p series. Cool. Dominating the internals though, is actually this massive battery. So this is rated at 91.2 watt hours, which Main Gear says will give you about 10 hours of use. Now, to be clear, that is not while you are gaming. That is while you are looking like a business professional with your RGB keyboard turned off. But it's still nice to have, because I don't know, eh, turned back on, whoops. I don't know about you, but I think it's good to be able to use a laptop for more than just games. <laughs> I love that. We put it back together, our render's going again. It's a fast laptop, it's thin, it's light, it's easily cleanable. You can make a couple of choice upgrades and you can get your very own at the link below. Thank you to Main Gear for sponsoring this video. Thanks to you guys for watching it. If you're looking for something else to watch right now, we've actually got, uh, what do we have? Oh, we've got a gaming monitor buyer's guide that you guys are gonna wanna check out. We'll have that linked down below.